Hey, it's Matt here. Welcome back to Practice Perfect University. Today we'll be discussing how to create OCF18 treatment plans from directly within the software. This is part three of the HKI series. Class is now in session. Step one, assuming that the HKI toolkit has been installed by the support department and you've finished setting up the AISI HKI invoice settings panel and you've entered all of the correct information in the patient's client profile, you're ready to begin submitting OCF 23s and 18s to HKI from within Practice Perfect. To start, I'm going to demonstrate how to create an OCF 18. Open up a patient's client profile and click on Client OCF 23-18 listing on the function bar. This view provides you with a comprehensive list of all the OCF 18s and 23s that you've prepared for this client. The chart works as follows. Create date tells you when the form was created. Type tells you whether it's an OCF 23 or an OCF 18. Description allows you to record some details when creating the specific treatment plan. It is an optional field, however. Document number will be automatically populated once the submission is successfully completed. Submission date will tell you when the treatment plan was sent to HKI. Step 2. Click on New OCF 23-18 on the function bar. Select OCF 18. The following panel will appear. The OCF 18 panel is comprised of the following tabs. Coverage, Injury, Goals, treatment, and additional comments and attachments. We'll begin by filling out the coverage tab. Use the description field to name this OCF 18. This is for internal use only and will not be submitted to HKI. Select the primary payer from the drop-down menu. The options in this list are limited to the payers you added in the billing rules tab. Ensure that the option selected here is the HKI insurer. Is client signature waived and is client signature on file will be checked off by default. Make your adjustments as needed. Input the relevant dates in the client signature date and the provider signature date fields. Then choose whether this impairment falls under MIG. Take note of the checkboxes below the, the MIG circumstance heading. If the patient has exceeded the MIG limit, Check off the first box. If the client has a pre-existing medical condition, which is exacerbating the injury sustained in the accident, check off the second box. You must include your reasoning in the MIG explanation field. Step three. Next, click on the injury tab. The fields here represent part seven and part eight of the OCF 18 form. In prior conditions, select no, yes, or unknown to indicate whether the patient suffers from any. If yes, use the text box to describe them. In treatment of prior conditions, select no, yes, or unknown to indicate whether the patient has received treatment for their prior conditions. If yes, use the text box beside to describe them. In concurrent conditions, select no, yes, or unknown to indicate whether the patient is suffering from any other conditions at the same time as the injury sustained in their accident. If yes, use the text box beside to describe them. Moving on, take note of the activity limitations section. Under the employment heading, make note of whether the patient is employed or not using the check boxes. You may also indicate whether the injuries sustained are preventing them from living a normal life in said field. Use the text box to further describe the patient's activity limitations if you chose yes. Below modified employment, select no, not employed, unknown, or yes. You must use the text box to record additional details about any modified employment if you chose yes. Step 4. Then click on the Goals tab. The fields here represent Part 9 of the OCF 18 form. 
Begin by identifying whether the ultimate goal of the treatment is pain reduction, increased range of motion, increase in strength, or other. If other, you must use the text box to indicate what that goal actually is. As for functional goals, state whether the goal is to restore the patient to activities of normal life, pre-accident work activities, modified work activities, or other. Like above, you need to include some more details about the functional goal in the text box if you selected other. The progress evaluation field represents the how will the client's progress towards the goal be evaluated question on the printed form. Completed accordingly. The prior plan impact field represents the what was the client's improvement on the previous plan based on your assessment methods question on the printed form. If this is not the first OCF 18 you've completed for this patient's episode of care, for example, you may have exceeded the limit on the original OCF 18 and you need to submit another one, then complete this field accordingly. In barriers to recovery, you may check yes and input information about any factors that may impede the patient when working towards their goal. It may be left blank if there are no barriers to recovery. In barrier recommendations, you may check yes and input some details about how you will cope with the barriers and possibly overcome them. It may also be left blank if irrelevant. In concurrent treatment, check yes and input details about any additional treatment that the patient will be receiving at the same time. This too can be left blank if there's nothing to report. Step five, moving along, let's check out the treatment tab. This is where you can add the specific proposed goods and services that you intend to perform for the patient. Click the green plus sign and choose one of your fee codes from the list. The description will automatically be filled out. Enter the provider responsible for administering the treatment. Input the quantity of the fee code. The price will be automatically calculated based on the quantity entered. Enter the number of times that you will be administering the treatment tied to this particular fee code in the volume field. The cost will automatically be calculated based on the amount entered in volume. The tax will automatically be calculated based on the total cost and your regional sales tax as entered during setup. Now, if you enter a HKI code like SZZPR, i.e. a daily session code, and you'd like to record the details of the individual services provided each day, you can click the New Good and Service Detail button on the function bar. Doing so creates another line in the chart, except this one will be tied to the original code entered. Input the volume on the top line to indicate how many sessions these services will be distributed across. You can see the net total and the grand total, including tax, of all these proposed treatments here. When that's done, there are a few fields below that must be filled in. Please note that these fields are mandatory. Even if the amount is zero, you still need to fill them out. Otherwise, you'll receive an error message when trying to submit an OCF 18 to HKI. Enter an estimate duration in weeks, the number of visits already provided, the estimated amount from insurer 1 and 2. You may enter an explanation of goods and services if required. Step 6. Lastly, click on the additional comments and attachments tab. If you have anything else you'd like to mention about this specific OCF 18, you may use this text box. If you're sending any additional attachments to the insurer, you must use the attachments being sent checkbox and the items field to indicate what it is you're sending. Please note that these items must be sent separately and cannot be included on the submission in Practice Perfect. When you're done, click OK to produce your OCF 18. 
Thanks for visiting. Be sure to check out the rest of the videos in Practice Perfect University.